Running a sports car business can be hard, so today I'm going to tell you guys the five things that I've learned this year running my sports car business full-time. If you didn't know already, my name is Nick from Stack & Sell. I've been selling sports cards for over five years now and went into it full-time almost 12 months ago, and I've, I've been having a lot of fun doing it, but I've also learned a lot and uh, gained a lot of knowledge along the way, and I hope that I could share that with you guys today. If you guys do enjoy this video, if you can, it means a lot. If you could please leave a like, subscribe. I post a lot of content sports card related and a lot of tips, tricks, card show vlogs. If that's what you're looking for, stay around and subscribe. I've been selling cards, like I said, for over almost a year now, and at first I was like, okay, this is gonna be a fun little thing and I'm gonna be able to buy cards, sell cards, collect cards. And what I've learned is it's not as easy as just buy, sell, buy, sell. There's a lot of variables. If that's tracking inventory, if that's grading, if that's um, keeping up with taxes, there's a bunch of different things that I'm gonna go over today. And um, I hope some of these suggestions are able to help someone out. The tip number one that I would give is kind of broad, but I'm going to use it in a card show sense in the way that if you are, if you see something that you don't, you don't know, or you don't understand why that person did that, ask questions, guys. Like, I've learned so much this year. When I go to shows, I go to shows, and yes, I'm buying, selling, trading cards, and I'm hoping to make relationships there because I've seen the relationships lead to so much more in in business, so much more in cards. I've I've had relationships that now lead to things outside of cards. But when you ask questions about things, you learn things. And you may go down a rabbit hole of a, a, a whole story of someone telling you something, or hey, why is, like maybe you, maybe you go to a show and you go, why is that label black instead of the gold label for a BGS label? Well, that's a BGS 10 gold, or BGS 10 black label, and a black label is when there's 10, four 10s, basically just asking questions on things that you don't know, guys. It, it could lead you into places that you may not know, even if you're on some, like I'm applying this to card shows, but if you're on YouTube, leave a, leave a comment on this video if you have anything that you wanna ask about. Leave a comment on other videos. There's usually someone that will respond and get to your question. If not, go to the next video, go to the next poll, go to whatever. Keep asking those questions because you're gonna keep getting more knowledge. Tip number two that I would give is constantly churn inventory. And if you guys don't know, I'm always preaching churn, 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 because there are people out there and you could do whatever you want. This is just how I run my business. You run your business or you run, you do sports cards however you want. I have seen the most success in get a card or get a, get a card or get a slab and try to move that within 30 days. Yes, there is some inventory that I'm, I sit on if I'm buying it for a different season, if right now it's it's April, so I'm buying football and I'm sitting on it till July, August time, um, I understand that. But if you're buying cards and you're buying it to sell it in the near future, and let's say within a couple weeks, you haven't sold that card, figure out, maybe you have to take less than you bought it for. The, the whole thing is just over and over churning. And yes, you're gonna have those those big wins that you're making 120, 200% on a card. Then you're gonna have those losses as well that you're losing 30, 40, 50%, sometimes even 200% on a card. But if you don't take that loss, that money is just sitting there. And yeah, it sucks that, that, that you lost money on a card or you lost money on a deal, but you have to trust yourself that you know that, okay, if I take uh, a $200 card that I bought for $300 that I could take that $200 and build it back up to 300 instead of just hoping that player starts to play well or hoping that card starts to go back up. So moral of the story, tip number two, constantly churn inventory. Now trust me, this may seem really, really dumb, but tip number three, ask your customers what they want. So I saw on Instagram, um, and I've seen when I ask the people that I'm selling to, hey, like you bought this slab off me, what else are you looking for? And then they tell me, oh, I'm looking for uh, Matthew Stafford. Okay, well, so then when I'm at a show now, when I see a Matthew Stafford card, I maybe pick it up, take a picture to the guy, send it to him. Hey, would you be interested in this? You never know, that may lead to another deal 
or when, when you acquire inventory, hey, would you want the Stafford? You never know. Asking someone that buys off you once a month and it leads to twice a month, that doubles your sales from just that person. And if you could turn that into a weekly thing, um, it could completely change your business. Having those constant people that you could go to with inventory makes it easier so you could churn more inventory and buy more inventory. Um, so moral of the story, figure out what your customers want and then try to go, like you don't have to actively be seeking that, but if you come across it, be like, hey, are you interested in this card? I know you were looking for it. And you never know, they may be interested in it. Tip number four, and a lot of people need to hear this because I will be 100% honest, I was not very good at this last year at the beginning of the year and before when I ran other businesses, but track everything, guys. Oh, Uncle Sam's gonna come after me. Oh, whatever, you, you'd, rather, you'd rather Uncle Sam you'd have to pay your fair share instead of having to go to prison. So basically what I'm saying is when you go to a card show, track down the amount of money that you're spending, track down what you sold. Um, me personally, I just write everything in my notes and then when I get home, I upload it to a spreadsheet over there. That way you're not just, but when it comes to tax season, oh my God, what is going on? I don't know what to do. I bought all these cards and Uncle Sam wants all this money from me. Track what you buy, track what you sell, if that's on eBay, if that's on whatnot, shows, because you got to remember that cash that you're getting as well, guys. Um, track what you get, track what you sell, even the losses, I understand, the losses are not fun, but there's something that you got to deal with. So, moral of the story, track all your buys, and, and also track anything that you're buying for your business as well. Track when you're buying uh, top loaders, track when you're buying penny sleeks. Track everything because that's all an expense and, and it could all be written off. So tip number four, track your stuff. Tip number five, and this is the biggest tip that I will give to anyone and it completely changed sports cards for me in 2022. Guys, learn how to grade. Oh my gosh. Learning how to grade has been like the most amazing thing that's happened to me this year. I've graded before in previous years, but I've never constantly sent cards every single week. So then in a, in a sense that I get cards back every single week. And guys, it completely changed, not my life, but it completely changed cards for me in the way that I've always got new inventory. So then when, when I go to shows, people know that my case is going to be new because I'm constantly getting new cards every single week. And I'm constantly selling new cards, constantly buying new cards. So I have new stuff. But learning how to grade has completely changed sports cards for me. Making two, three, four, five, whatever acts on, on an ungraded card that you're buying. I'm telling you guys, if you could learn the grading game, it's never something that you'll learn overnight. And trust me, I'll, I get bad grades sometimes too. Um, I got an 8.5 back last week and I don't know how it was an 8.5, but whatever. There, there's bad grades, there's good grades that you get. You gotta take your losses with your wins as well. So overall, learn how to grade. Find a, find a company that you like grading with. Find a level that you like sending to. Start doing that and do it consistently. Maybe you don't do very well on your first couple, first couple submissions, but just doing it over and over and over again and learning from, from what you're doing wrong is gonna lead to more and more money in the future. So to recap this whole entire video, the five things that I have learned selling sports cards full-time in 2022 are constantly ask questions whenever you're at shows and ask questions in the comments on videos or on Twitter, on Instagram, any platform that has card-related content. Number two, constantly churn inventory, have new stuff in your case, have new stuff at shows, have new stuff on your eBay page, wherever you're selling it. Constantly sell stuff. You may take losses on things. You may take, you're, you're gonna take wins on things, but as long as you're constantly churning, you should be able to constantly be making more and more money. Tip number three, learn to make more sales with repeat customers. And if that's asking your customer what they want, so then you could provide that to them. Ask them as many questions as, what, do you, what, what cards are you looking for right now? What sets are you looking for? Try to figure out what your customer wants. And then tip number four, 
track everything, make sure that you know all your numbers. If that's eBay, whatnot, whatever you're selling on, if that's at shows, track all that stuff so then you know by the end of the year, this is how much money I want or made, or this is how much money I lost. And the fifth and final tip is learn how to grade and do it consistently, even if you're not good at it at first, figure out why you're not doing it right. Maybe before you send your submission out, say, okay, this card has this imperfection or this is what I saw and see if when the car comes back, if it comes back a lower grade and then be like, okay, that's the reason why, because it had that imperfection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see more content like this, please leave a like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what other videos like this that you guys wanna see tips wise. New car show vlogs almost every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.